comment on this window. When I'm sad, I press my face up against the glass in the hope of getting sympathy from strangers. Yes, it's a law office, not a pet shop. Hey, why are you doing that one? I always press my face up against this one. Because my mother decided she's coming right here from the airport, and then we're going to my place. And grimy windows are the first thing she notices. Interesting. No, actually, dust is the first thing she notices. Does anyone have a dust rag? I know it's hard to believe, but I left mine at home. Sarah, Sarah, calm down. Here, relax. Now, just take some deep breaths and say, my mother's visit will be fun. Oh, God. Come on, say it with me. My mother's visit will be fun. My, my mother's, mother's visit will, will be fun. <laughs> My mother's visit will be fun. Please, I have to clean this place up. Sarah, <laughs> I never clean when my old lady comes to visit. Gives her something to do while I'm sleeping. My son never cleans. Before I come to visit, he just moves to a new apartment. Ross, he has to come over for dinner tonight. If we're alone all evening, we'll start fighting about why I'm not married and why I don't have a family and everything. Sarah, I'd be happy to, but don't you think your mother would mind? She hasn't been alone with you for a long time now. Russ, please. I'll do it for you when your relatives come to town and try to make your life a living hell. <laughs> I'll be there at 7. Poor kitten. Moms can really get on your nerves, huh? Yeah. Whenever my mom comes to visit, she always wants to go with me everywhere. I told her, Ma, if a guy wants to pay a dollar to talk to a naked lady, he doesn't want his mother along, all right? <laughs> Really? Come here. This is my office. Oh, isn't this lovely? What a great office for a lawyer just starting out. Uh, Mom, this is Roz. A great friend for a lawyer just starting out. Hi. Roz, I feel like we're old friends. Oh, me too. And this is Dennis. Oh, yes. The one you told me about. <laughs> I can't tell you how happy I am to finally meet both of you. I've heard so much about you. Oh, Mom, come here. This is Helen, our receptionist. Oh, pleased to meet you. Hello, Mrs. McKenna. I'm Marty Lang. I'm sure Sarah's told you all about me. <laughs> Marty Lang? No. Marty Lang, capital L-A-N-G. I'm sorry. Are you sure this is your mother? Sure, I don't know what you were worried about. Your mother's great. Yeah, sure, she's great now. That's because you're here. Promise me you'll never leave, Ross. Here it is. Sarah. Now, I want you to show Ross the hat I bought you. She bought me this hat, Ross. <laughs> it's an authentic Australian shepherd's hat that her dad and I bought on our trip to Sydney. That's perfect. I never know what to wear when I herd sheep. I cannot tell you how good it makes me feel to be here with you girls. You're both so beautiful and talented. And it's so interesting that you're both still independent. Hey, Russ, how about some dessert? Mom bought lovely kiwi tart. Mmm, sounds good. I've been worried I haven't been getting enough kiwi in my diet. Enough for me. Thanks, Mom. I am stuffed. Oh, now, Sarah, come on. Have some dessert. Now you're getting too skinny again. I look skinny? Mom, I'm far from skinny. It's fine to be thin, but you are too thin. Mom, really, I said I'm not... Oh, Sarah, have a little dessert. We all look better porked up. <laughs> a certain joie de vie you won't find in those skinny girls. Sarah, you know, you should really treat yourself to some new dishes. Now, look, these are beginning to get a little chipped. What if you have to have an important client up for dessert? Oh, I never have clients over for dessert. Well, you can never tell. No, I can tell. I do not have clients over for dessert. But as your business starts to build... I don't want my business to build. You don't have to raise your voice, Sarah. Sorry, Mom. Oh, Ross, let me get you another fork. This one's got a crust all over it. Thanks, Mrs. McKenna. 
You know, honey, the reason you get this gray-green slime all over your silver is the soap you're using. You need to use the soap for hard water. Now, that's the reason that your double boiler is so slimy. Mom. Now, can you see why she makes me so crazy? Sarah, she's right. This gray-green slime probably is your soap. Well, what a nice time I'm having. Thank you. No men around, just the three of us girls. Hmm. Now, Rod, do you like being single? <laughs> or do you sometimes wish that Hey, some... it's the door. I'll just go get it. Hi. Good time to meet you, Mom. This is a great time. This is a perfect time. Mom, these are my neighbors, Stuart and Jesse. Hello. 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 Hi there. Hi. I have a mom, too, but we're divorced. No, 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 Jesse. You're not divorced. Just Mom and I are divorced. What am I? Well, you're our little boy, and we love you very much. Oh, yeah. That's what I am. <laughs> anyway, we want to come and meet you, Mrs. McKenna. Sarah told us so much about it. Oh, well, how very nice. Won't you sit down and join us? No, no, I'm sorry. I can't. I promised Jess I'd take him to the movies tonight. Well, thanks for stopping okay, by. Good. Have a nice time at the movies. Okay. Bye. Nice meeting you. And uh, if we don't see you again... So what? <laughs> Yeah. There is nothing in the world like a little one to lift your spirit. Oh, uh, here we go. Get ready. Do you like children, Ross? Oh, I love kids. Ross, careful. You don't know what you're getting into. I would certainly hate to think about you two girls going through life without ever having children. Come on. Really, whether Ross has kids or not is her own personal business. Sarah, come on. It's okay. You know, sometimes I think I want to have a lot of kids. You never told me that. Well, Sarah, I guess your mom's just so easy to talk to. <laughs> Doug and I have had our rocky spots, but all in all, we've had a very happy marriage. You are so lucky, Claire. Where do you find men like that these days? Oh. Finding a good man is like finding a needle in a haystack. <laughs> oh, I didn't realize how late it was. This has been so much fun. Claire, you're going to have to come to town more often. Oh! <laughs> I hope it wasn't one of your good ones. Well, according to you, I don't have any good ones. <laughs> I'll see you two tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Good night, Bye. Bye. That was so much fun. Oh, I like your friends. Maybe tomorrow we can have that nice dentist over. You know, the one you think is, uh... Mom, I don't think he's... I know he's... Oh, now, Sarah, you can never be sure. Historically, so many famous bachelors have been accused of being... <laughs> oh, I'm not accusing him of anything. He told me he was... <laughs> he was probably just pulling your leg. <laughs> I like that rush. She's so smart. She seems to know what she's all about, where she's going. <laughs> Unlike me, you mean. Sarah, I didn't say that. So, Mom, what's new with Daddy? Oh! He bought a belt sander. <laughs> now he goes up to everybody and he says, take off your belt. I'll sand it for you. <laughs> <laughs> so what's new with you? OK. Go ahead and ask me. Ask you what? We both know what. <laughs> you have been here for six hours now, and you still haven't asked me if I'm seeing anyone yet. <laughs> Well, I'm not stupid. I don't want to get my head chewed on. Are you seeing anyone? Uh -huh. Why is it so terrible that I want to know that? I'm interested. Forgive me if I have strayed into forbidden territory. <laughs> Aren't you seeing anyone at all? Emma, I see a different man every night. I pick them at random from the phone book. I'm up to the L's now. 
Perhaps you should just give me a list of the subjects that I can and cannot bring up. I just don't know how to talk to you at all. Funny, I don't seem to have any trouble talking to your friend Roz. <laughs> I didn't hear you telling Roz that her double boiler is slimy. I'm just being honest. That's not just simple honesty. No one else has ever mentioned my slimy double boiler. No one else cares about your double boiler. Well, sometimes it just seems like everything you say to me is criticism. <sighs> that is simply not true. Oh, honey, now pull up your sleeve before you get goop all over your pretty blouse. <laughs> maybe I like a goopy blouse. <laughs> <clears throat> well, maybe like is too strong a word. <laughs> Maybe I just wish you would stop criticizing me all day long. I just don't even seem to be able to open my mouth around you anymore. <coughs> Seems like everything I say to you is wrong. Well, now you're sulking. I mean, it's impossible to have a normal conversation with you. Thank you. <laughs> hey, Mom. Well, we've got a few minutes here. Do you want to talk any more about slime? I think maybe it would be best for everybody if I just went on home tomorrow. Obviously, it wouldn't make the slightest bit of difference to you. Hey, Mom, we're both grown adults. If you want to leave tomorrow, that's your privilege. Thank you. That's a nice thing to say. <laughs> Look, I know I'm supposed to apologize, but I really don't think I'm at fault here. I didn't say that. We just don't get along, that's all. I failed at your upbringing. <laughs> all right, is here. <laughs> Hi, Mrs. McKenna. Hello. I love the shoulders on that blouse. Thank you. Oh, you know what? If you put your undergarments on top, it's great because they're light, and they don't, it doesn't matter if they get crushed or not, and because... Or you can put them any place you like. I guess it's up to the individual traveler. Dennis. Is everything your mother says all wrong? Always. <laughs> Always. How do you know my mother? <laughs> well, I'm ready. Goodbye, Mother. Have a nice flight home. Thank you. Excuse me, but didn't you just get here yesterday, Mrs. McKenna? Yes, but... Apparently, one day is more than enough for my daughter. <laughs> Will you listen to her, Dennis? I'm the one that's supposed to apologize, even if I don't think I did anything wrong. That's the way this goes. She gets to say anything at all, and later, I apologize. No, Dennis, that is not the way that goes around here. Yes, it is, Dennis. That's how it's been my whole life. She is always ready to jump down my throat if I so much as look cross-eyed. She is exaggerating. No, I am not exaggerating, Dennis. I knew I should have taken the bus this morning. <laughs> oh, boy, Sarah, I had a great time last night. Your mother is terrific. I'd love to see her again. How long is she staying? About another 10 minutes. <laughs> Sarah's mom's leaving. They had a fight. Wow, Sarah, you threw out your own mother? She decided to leave early. That's certainly her privilege. Yeah, but one day? What'd you do, drop a scorpion in her bath water? <laughs> but for future reference, it does work. Uh, I suggest you go apologize. Apologize for what? She was insulting me all evening. I had a perfect right to get upset. And anyway, it's her idea to leave. She doesn't want to leave, Sarah. She didn't come all the way out here just to stay one day. Don't be so sure. My mother's done it. Uh, <laughs> Sarah, don't you realize she just wants you to talk her into staying? Of course I realize that. But isn't it time that we stop playing games? 
I mean, she has to treat me like an adult. There has to be some mutual respect here. After all, our relationship is her responsibility, too. Objection. Speaking for parents everywhere, I believe the burden of getting along with the parent belongs to the child. We did it for our parents, you do it for us. We're tired. I am not the one who told my mother to leave. Sarah, there's another side to this, too. The point of view of the mother. Now, when you have a daughter, you see yourself in her. You see in her the potential of having everything you always wanted for yourself. You have her for 17 years, and then she leaves. She's gone. She's too busy for you now. She has a life of her own. You don't know where she is, what she's doing, who she's with. I mean, you feel like a stranger to this person who means the world to you. So you see, all this picking and whining is just another way of getting involved with you again. Sarah, don't shut her out. Ordinarily, I would give in to her, but I just think I have to stand up for myself once, that's all. Sarah, all I know is if you let your mother leave, you're gonna feel like a great big jerk. I have to get back to work. You only get one mom. <laughs> Don't you have to be at work? Well, I do, but I just came home to make sure I hadn't left any major appliances on. <laughs> no? No? Good, that's okay. <laughs> Everything seems to be in order. <laughs> Good. The uh, water's not running in the bathtub or anything, is it? No. Good. Good. What is drinking? Oh, just a little sherry. I had a couple of those little bottles in my purse from the plane. Mom, since when do you drink? Just a teensy bit when those closest to me hurt me the deepest. Hello, Miss McKenna. It's me, Stuart, from downstairs. Hey. Sarah. Oh, hey, did I come at the wrong time? Mm, that's OK. Oh, well, uh, I was just wondering, could I borrow a salad? <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't have any salad. Oh, you got lettuce? Yeah. Tomatoes? Mm -hmm. Peppers? Yeah. Celery? Mm -hmm. You got salad. <laughs> I know you think this whole thing is my fault. Since when do you care what I think? Well, of course I care. You're my mother. Oh, darling, if you are going to continue drinking, at least get another glass. Now, that one has a chip in it. <laughs> you see? You did it again. Everything I do is wrong. So the edge is a little chipped. Did you ever stop to think that I knew it was chipped and I purposely selected this glass because I like to live dangerously? <laughs> what is that supposed to mean? You always treat me like I don't know what I'm doing. Which, in this case, turns out to be true, but I am not stupid. I wish you would stop treating me like I am. Oh, Sarah, I don't think you're stupid. I just want to be able to be honest with you. Well, don't you see? It's not a case of honest versus dishonest. Okay, let me give you an example. Did you ever hear of the case of Henderson versus Lafayette, Indiana? It was the first time... Honey, what is this on your hand? It's just a little... Oh! Oh! <laughs> Oh, thanks. Well, anyway, Mom, like I was saying, the case of Henderson versus Lafayette, Indiana, was very interesting because it was the first time the concept of honesty, for its own sake, was tested in a... Why'd you stop? Aren't you gonna interrupt me? No, go on with what you were saying about honesty for its own sake. You were really listening to me. Of course, I always listen to you. No, no, you usually interrupt me. Uh, maybe, but I'm always listening while I'm interrupting. <laughs> Why can't you listen without interrupting? Because I'm your mother. <laughs> and when I see you doing something that I can help you with, I have to tell you, I like looking out for you. Mom, I like looking out for myself. I guess what you're saying is you don't need me anymore. Mom. No, you're right. It's time for me to let go. Mom, I didn't... No, now, Terry, you can't have it both ways. If you want me to let go, I will. But if you want me to be the mother, this is the only way I know how to do it. I 
guess I better go. Mom. <laughs> Don't go, okay? I want you to stay. <laughs> okay? <laughs> to be more understanding. Oh, I will, too. I love you, Sarah. I love you, too, Mom. This is just great. <laughs> Thanks so much. Are you okay? Yeah. Must be the onion. I didn't have any onion. Maybe it was a celery. <laughs> you feel like going out to an early lunch? Oh, yes. Sorry, I can't. I, I gotta go home and call my mother. <laughs> well, let's walk up to the top of the hill and catch a cable car. Okay, but you need to wear a scarf now. The weather here is very damp. <laughs> wear that just on my account. No, that's not why I'm wearing it. I love this hat. <laughs> it looks great with my scarf. And who knows, maybe we'll run into some sheep on the way. 